core three, review sheet eight, further differentiation. The questions on this video are different from those on the review sheet, but if you answer the video, then it will help you with the review sheet. Okay, first of all, looking at differentiation, y equals cos 3x, and we're going to do this by using the chain rule. So you could have done it directly, but if you're a bit unsure, we'll let u equal 3x. That means that du dx is 3. y is cos of 3x, well that now becomes cos of u, because u is 3x. And dy du, if you differentiate cos, you get minus sine, so it's minus sine of u. And now replacing the u by 3x, it's minus sine of 3x. Chain rule, dy over dx is dy over du multiplied by du over dx. Therefore, it is the minus sine 3x multiplied by the 3, so it's minus 3 sine 3x. You could have done it straight from here if you just say, well, cos goes to minus sine and the 3x bit won't change, but also differentiate the 3x to get the 3. So you, that would give you the minus sine of the 3x multiplied by the 3. Okay, let's look at one that's a bit harder. Now this one, y equals e to the 5x, and then brackets 3x squared minus 2 to the 4. This is one where there's a product, and you've got the chain rule as well, in effect. So you could, you've got the product between the e to the 5x and the uh, polynomial, the 3x squared minus 2 to the power 4. Now, if we try to do each of these, the e to the 5x and the 3x squared minus 2 to the 4, using the chain rule in full, it becomes very complicated when you then also have to do the product. So we're going to try to do those by function of a function. We'll just do them straight away. So, product rule. Go straight to your grid, e to the 5x, plus 1, the 3x squared minus 2 to the 4 here. You differentiate e to the 5x, the e part always stays the same, Differentiate 5x, you get 5, so you get 5e to the 5x. Differentiating here, this is a polynomial. Multiply by the power of 4. Differentiate the part in the brackets, and that gives you 6x. And then you reduce the power by 3, uh, sorry, reduce the power by 1, which brings it to 3. So you can go 4 times 6x, 24x, and then reduce the power by 1, 3x squared minus 2 cubed. Let's just check that again. Multiply by the power of 4. Differentiate the part in the brackets. That becomes your 6x, 4 lots of 6x, 24x. And then keep the 3x squared minus 2, but reduce the power by 1. Right, using the product rule, you multiply across. So you've got e to the 5x multiplied by this lot here, and you've got 5e e to the 5x multiplied by that part there. So, e to the 5x multiplied by is 24x, 3x squared minus 2 cubed. Add 5e e to the 5x multiplied by the 3x squared minus 2 to the power of 4. Now, if you're just asked to differentiate it, you can leave your answer like that. If, however, we wanted to do further work with this, let's say finding stationary points or something like that, then you will want to simplify this a bit. And you should notice straight away that e to the 5x occurs both times. And so you can take that out as a common factor. You should also note that you've got a 3x squared minus 2 cubed here. And this, 3x squared minus 2 to the power 4, is that 3x squared minus 2 cubed is also a common factor. So you've got e to the 5x as a common factor. You've got 3x squared minus 2 cubed as a common factor. Look at what's left over here. It's 24x. Look at what's left over here. You've got 5, and you've got another one of these 3x squared minus 2s. So as to make it 3x squared minus 2 to the power 4. And then it's just expand this lot and group this together a bit so you get e to the 5x, 3x squared minus 2 cubed, and then in here, 15x squared plus your 24x minus your 10. 
Okay, and if you wanted to do things where you were actually finding things like stationary points, you'd obviously put that equal to zero, and you could do use it then because you got everything worked out as um, factors of each other. Okay, or the, sorry, it's a product of factors. Okay, next one, question two. Find the equation of a normal to y equals sine 4x at x equals pi over 3. Notice whenever we're doing one of these, it's always going to be in radians whenever you're using sine and cos and any calculus. So dy over dx, okay, straight away. Sine goes to cos, it stays as cos 4x. Differentiate 4x, you get 4, so you get 4 cos 4x. I could have used chain rule, but it's much quicker to do it this way. When x is pi over 3, dy over dx, it will be 4 cos of 4 pi over 3. And that, you'll find, is equal to 4 times minus a half, so it's just minus 2. So the gradient of a tangent is minus 2. The gradient of a normal is the negative reciprocal. Therefore, it's minus 1 over your minus 2, minus 1 over a minus 2. The minus minuses cancel out, you're left with a half. Now, you also need to find, if you find the equation of a normal at a point, you've got the x coordinate, you've got the gradient, you need to find the y coordinate. The y coordinate at that point, y is sine 4x. So it's sine 4 lots of your pi over 3. That is minus root 3 over 2. So that tells you the point has x coordinate pi over 3, y coordinate minus root 3 over 2. Slot it into y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. y minus the y coordinate becomes y minus minus root 3 over 2. y plus root 3 over 2 is the gradient, a half, into multiplied by x minus the x coordinate, x minus the pi over 3. And you can leave your answer like that. Next one. If x is e to the minus 2y sine of 3y, find dy over dx when y is pi over 2. You notice things look the wrong way around here. You're being told what x is in terms of y and a point regarding y, but you'll be asked for dy over dx. The key thing here is don't worry about the dy over dx. Find dx over dy. You've got x in terms of y, so find dx over dy. It's product rule. So, e to the minus 2y, sine 3y. Differentiate the minus 2y. This is respect to y. You get minus 2, and the e bit stays the same. So it's minus 2, e to the minus 2y. Differentiating here. You multiply by the 3, differentiate 3y, you're going to get 3. And then sine goes to cos, so it's 3 cos 3y. dx dy, it's multiply across. So you're going to have e to minus 2y multiplied by your 3 cos 3y. And then you're also going to have minus 2 e to the minus 2y times sine 3y. And that will equal... If we take e to the minus 2y as a common factor, e to the minus 2y, 3 cos 3y, minus 2 sine 3y. When y is pi over 2, let's actually look what each bit is. This is going to become e to, oh, well, let's do the cosses and the sines first. You're going to get the cos 3y is cos of 3 pi over 2, and that is 0, and sine 3y is sine of 3 pi over 2, and that is minus 1. Now let's slot it in, dx dy. e to the minus 2 lots of pi over 2. Well, 2 lots of pi over 2 is pi, so minus 2 lots of pi over 2, minus pi, so you get e to the minus pi. 3 lots of 0, 0. Minus 2 lots of minus 1. Minus 2 lots of minus 1. So you're going to end up with 2, that minus minus making a plus, 2e to the minus pi. And that is dx dy. So dy dx is 1 over dx dy. It's reciprocal of it. So it's going to be 1 over t2e to the minus pi. Now if you want to, you can make it a bit simpler. 
that stays as a half, 1 over 2. e to the minus pi is 1 over e to the pi. So 1 over e to the pi, you've used a reciprocal of e to pi to get 1 over it, and now you want 1 over that, it flips back again, and you just get e to the, e to the pi. So you'll end up with a half of e to the pi, or e to the pi over 2. So what you're doing is you're saying e to the minus pi is 1 over e to the pi, 1 over that becomes e to the pi, but you've still got to multiply by your half. You could have left it as 1 over 2 e to the minus pi if you liked. Okay, so I hope this helps with you, you with your review sheet.